I'm going to take you through some best practices, and this is not just of um, uh, email marketing. So as and when required, I'll also show you uh, where this is available or what feature you should use uh, inside Zoho campaigns. So let's, most of it you may know, you may get from uh, the different sites that you browse through, but these, pra these best practices that I have put up here is from our own experiences. So let's go there. So let's start with the audience. So clean list, of course, this is the most important part of creating an email marketing campaign is to build a very clean list. That is, the first recommendation from our staff is to not to buy lists from third-party vendors because uh, this can greatly, greatly affect your open rates. Your Many people can mark your emails as spam. So this is something that is not recommended at all. Groups. That's the first one, groups. No sales at, no info at, no support at. You don't want your email marketing campaigns to be growing to a very large group. You would rather uh, that the campaign goes out, the email goes out to a single person uh, who reads your email, who reads your content, who understands what you're trying to say. So it's, it's, it's a good practice to avoid groups in your mailing list. Double opt-in. A uh, little while ago, uh, we were talking about why, uh, why email marketing is one of the most, uh, the best forms of marketing, that uh, it, is, uh, it is not too invasive, at the same time, it comes at a very low cost and gives you good quality, but one of the reasons for that is because it is permission-based. It's a permission-based marketing, so double opt-in is the best way to get your contacts inside your uh, mailing list. So many of you uh, know the concept, so double opt-in is when you allow your subscribers to verify a link by email that tells you that you can send them email campaigns or content to them. So double opt-in is something that you should uh, utilize to build your mailing list. Sign-up forms are a great way. Every sign-up form inside uh, Zoho campaigns is associated to a uh, mailing list. So if you embed that code, I'll probably quickly show you that inside Zoho campaigns itself. So if you go to list management, if you look at a uh, mailing list, you see you have the sign-up form option. So you can embed these codes inside your website. So that makes it easy to bring in your subscribers from your website. So double opt-in is a good practice. We have, we have built in a field called uh, opt-in for each of your subscribers. You can use this for your subscribers too. It's a good practice. So all you need to do is use this email consent merge tag that you see, use it in your campaigns, get the permission from your subscribers so that this field becomes true. So this is a good practice. Make sure that the opt-in is true for all subscribers. So again, double opt-in is a great way. Knowing your subscribers and how you need to segment and target them, so by country, by age, by uh, gender, or uh, uh, geography is the most uh, common type of segmentation that we get. So this impacts your open rates, click rates, greatly, and it improves them as well. Uh, that was the how you build your mailing list. Uh, we move on to the subject line because that's the next step while you're creating your campaign inside Zoho campaigns. So uh, we have tried with a lot of subject lines and we've understood that 50 characters or less in your subject line is a, a good subject line that, because that's the first impression. That is the first thing that your recipients see. Personalization in subject line, again, uh, we do give, a, give this option as well. So if you look at, uh, go to... Go to your email campaigns, you see that you can use personalization in your subject line as well. But then, this is where you have to be slightly careful because uh, it depends on the type of campaign. You can't send out a very large mass, uh, mass email campaign and then just call everybody by name. And even when you're not sure if you have, if it is the first time that you are getting in touch with a person, if you're not sure you have their first names, uh, it might just show up as... Uh, 
hello customer. And that looks very bad. So you need to be very careful with the data and the type of campaign that you're sending out and make sure that uh, you personalize your subject lines, which is good, but base it on, use your judgment, use it for the, the type of campaign that you think is right again. So be selective. So that was some tips on the subject line. Uh, moving on to the content itself. So this is something everybody would know. Being relevant in your content, of course. You're targeting your customers, so be very relevant. Keep your content uh, to the point, which is a uh, good practice again. Mobile. Uh, this is something I really love uh, sharing with everybody because of the uh, increase in the mobile usage. So it's a good practice to make your templates responsive, which means that they should look good on any, res any device that your recipient is holding. So we made all our templates and layouts responsive. So let me quickly go to an existing campaign and let's edit a draft and look at the... I'm going to create content here. Now, if you look at these, these templates and layouts are what we made uh, responsive in a recent update. So these look good on any device that your recipient is holding. Even before that, we had these smart templates, and these are for just your mobile phone. You can use these smart templates or the mobile-friendly templates that you see here. So that's for the mobile audience. And another thing that you want to uh, Check, keep checking is your reports. Look at the user agent statistics. Okay, this is just a demo uh, that I sent out. But keep a check on this part of your, uh, cam of your reports and see if it is increasing with every campaign. You will definitely see an upward trend. So this is one of the reasons that you should employ pre-designed templates and layouts that are responsive. So that said, let's go to the header and footer links. Now, this again, you need to make sure that you have the proper links in your uh, template. So you can have a couple of links like unsubscribe. That is one of the most important links in your uh, template. And uh, you can have a view in header, view in browser link again. That's, it's good to have that right on your header because suppose some email, email client does not show your uh, email properly, you can, uh, the recipient can still view it uh, on, in the browser. So in Zoho campaigns, this is how we do it. You go to settings, you go to campaign themes, and you see that you have the options to, let's just add a new theme and see how it looks. So I'm just, again, going to call it demo here and just going to create. So if you see this, you have the options to select the header text, and this is how it looks, the footer, and unsubscribe, again, very important. Uh, it's not necessary that you have to show this in the footer. Suppose you're using this, uh, using the unsubscribe merge tag in your uh, campaign somewhere in the content. You can, uh, you, cannot, you can hide this from the footer, but just make sure that the unsubscribe link is there in your campaign. You can also show how, if you, if, you can also decide if you want the update profile links or tell a friend links uh, to make, to, so that the reach of your campaign is better or also include your social profiles. And you can also customize how your header and footer should look. So this is a good practice uh, to include the right links in your campaign. And in Zoho campaigns, once again, this is under campaign themes. And while you are creating your campaign, if you go to email campaigns, OK, I'm going to choose uh, a template here. This is one of the steps of creating a campaign. Let's choose a pre-designed template. Choose this and uh, quickly edit something here. So I'm choosing this. I'm sure that my template is responsive. I'm going to say save and close. And once I've done that, the next step gives you the options to choose your campaign themes. Now, if you remember, you had created this under settings. You can set it here, and that will enable the header and footer for your email campaigns. This is something I was, uh, I've already uh, spoken about. Unsubscribe is a very, very, very important link in your uh, campaign. Uh, in fact, that is the whole point of permission marketing uh, for email marketing. Uh, this is something, again, you had a lot of you had questions to why send for review, but that's a good practice. We have anti-spam laws, and you need to make sure that your content, your subject line, your template, your images 
abide by the anti-spam laws. So that's something we help you. When you send it for review, our team does the entire anti-spam uh, compliance and we approve the campaign for you. Timing it right, again, important step here. Uh, this is not something you would get uh, with your initial campaigns. If you're just starting with email marketing, this is not something you would know immediately. Uh, based on our experiences, we have seen that midweek days work best, Tuesdays to Thursdays. But there was one type of campaign that when I, I had to send out some information to uh, subscribers, uh, there was ones that uh, Fridays also worked for me. So uh, best days are Tuesdays to Thursdays, so mid midweek, safe bet. That said, we'll also cover a little bit about uh, the deliverability part. Now, deliverability defines the number of emails that are actually delivered or that, that, that have actually reached your uh, recipient's inboxes. So this is to make sure, so this is a step that you need to follow. You go through all the content step, the subject step. Now all that, uh, define your uh, uh, authenticity of your email, but there's something that you need to do at the Zoho campaigns end also. And that's two types are called uh, SPF and DKIM. Now if you, if you go to your settings tab, you will see a tab called email authentication. This is where you allow us, Zoho Campaigns, to send emails on your behalf. Now, if you do that, you can be sure that most of your emails are delivered to your uh, recipients' inboxes. Another thing that's important for deliverability is your sender's address. It's better that you have domain-specific and valid addresses as your sender's address. But it is really important that you analyze your reports right from the beginning. So uh, if you look at some of the screenshots that I've put here, so Zoho Campaigns tells you the bounces, the, uh, the number of opens, the unsubscribes. And earlier I was telling you that you should also look at your user agent here and uh, how many people have uh, clicked on your link, the recipient activity, how many people have opened, what are the unopens. So it is, it's very important that you look at all the reports that are given in your bio, by Zoho campaigns. For example, the link click details, that was very useful for us uh, in, in a recent campaign because it told us the, we had a major call to action uh, that was registering for a particular webinar. So we, we understood the number of people who have clicked it. So we could take follow-up actions by sending out emails to all those people who have probably not clicked uh, the, the link that we wanted them to. So that's, that's an, it's very important that you analyze all the reports that are available. Again, user agent, I've gone over this. See, see if there is an increasing trend in this part. It definitely will be there, so you need responsive templates again. So these are some of the uh, options that you need to do. Uh, administrator settings. Now, this is specific to Zoho Campaigns. Now, if, let's go back uh, and show. If you're using Zoho Campaigns, you go to Settings. Now, a couple of things that you, you need to uh, look at, and that is the users and also the privileges that you, the permissions that you give to all the other users in your organization. So uh, you might want your uh, colleagues to uh, see your uh, email campaigns or mailing list, but you do not want them to uh, uh, delete any campaigns that, you're, that are available. So you can, you can base it here. You can decide them right here under permissions and privileges, and also add the users to your uh, Zoho Campaigns account. So that's something the administrators of Zoho Campaigns need to uh, look at. Uh, if you go back, so I'll have users and permissions, make sure you look at that. And the final takeaway is to always keep testing because uh, you will not understand your audience unless you do this. If you're just getting started with email marketing, Again, you're not going to know the right time, what kind of content, the type of subscribers. So you really need to keep testing subject, uh, sender's details, and the content. Sub these are the most common types of testing that people do. And also the time. Time is very important. It depends on your subscribers and when they will open uh, their campaigns, what kind, uh, what kind of campaigns uh, engages your subscribers the most. So this is something that you need to really practice as you are um, getting ahead with email marketing. So, and that's it. These are some that I had to share.